Hi guys, it's me again and sorry I've not been on for a week but I have been busy doing work for a gallery submission well, two actually one in America for an art magazine but I won't know the outcome of that until the end of December of this year and one for a shout out for a gallery not far from me um, shout out to Pound Gallery um, it's their 10 year anniversary they're quite local to me they're about 20 odd miles away and because I did Swindon Open Studio I was asked to submit a piece of work and it's really good when you're involved with a lot of different things because you never really know what it may lead to. I mean, Swindon Open Studios this year, this is my third year of doing it. I think this is my third year. And each year gets better and better. Um, through um, Swindon Open Studios, I am now teaching in a community hall. Um, shout out to Savanac Social Hall in Swindon Old Town. Uh, a friend of mine, she does a lot of printmaking and uh, she is an amazing woman. Shout out to Alex and one of my very special friends. And uh, she was interested in starting some ink workshops, printing. And um, yeah, that's what we're doing together. We're on our fourth week this week and it's slowly growing and we've been asked to keep it up longer. So yeah, really, really pleased. So you never know when you're invited to do something where it may lead to. So anyway, what I'm doing today is I'm showing you how a sketchbook can be really useful to creating a larger piece of work. Um, in my in this particular sketchbook there are other pieces of work further towards the front which have become bigger pieces, uh, trial pieces for illustrations and that's one thing you can do in the safety of your sketchbook is that you can show people or you can show yourself an outcome and will it work you can try out your initial ideas and see if you know see how they turn out and then when you get to the bigger picture you can tweak it so this inspiration for this piece is actually Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Heart Club Band and I really love the film The Yellow Submarine I think any child of the 60s absolutely love that film I think you can get it on DVD still. I do know that when it was its anniversary, it was remastered and the colours were made brighter. And that, but the artwork I absolutely adore. It was amazing. I did think that all the artwork was done by Peter Blake, but apparently it wasn't. It was done by a German artist. So even I have found out something about the Yellow Submarine. So what? I did for inspiration is I wrote down the words of Lucy in the sky with diamonds and it is amazing when you actually sit down and listen to a song regardless that there is actually a video out there you know try not to listen to, try not to see the video but to try and listen to the song a few times and see what pictures conjure up or, or what words or statements actually stick in your head and this is what's happened with this piece um, it says newspaper taxis arrive in the shore waiting to carry you away now taxis actually don't really aspire much to me although I do have a piece in my head to use New York taxi cabs and I have used them on Saxo but I did like the idea of the newspapers because newspapers are really important in everyday life and what I wanted to do was depict some of the 60s and although I don't have any original newspaper from the 60s I decided that I would use the sky 
uh, newspaper for the sky, which is which is I've done. And I love I love the way that the, the sky is marmalade sky. I mean, how amazing is that? And what was more amazing was not very long ago here in the UK, we had another storm which blew up all the sand from the Sahara and brought it across to the UK. And the whole day our sky was completely orange. Most surreal situation. Um, it reminded me of how what it would be like to live in Mars and it really did affect my eyesight. So having witnessed that, I really wanted the sky to have this amazing yellow to reflect the tangerine sky. Another thing that I wanted to try and achieve with this was I through doing the, pit, the print shops again, see, you never know where things are going to lead to. Through doing the print shops again, I um, thought back about different artists that I like. And like most people, I, I am intrigued by Andy Warhol. I do like his repeat pattern. But more, I like the way that he uses abstract colours for hair, face, you know, like the Man and Monroe pictures. I really do like the way that he's used different colours for the hair. And so within this piece again, I wanted to include an element of Andy Warhol. And I designed three girls from the 50, from the 60s, California girls, I call them the Californian girls. And I liked the wavy hair because it gave me a lot more to play with in colour wise. It gave me a lot, a lot more to play with and the waviness of the hair allowed me to break it up into segments so I could add a variant of colour and this is what you can see me doing now. What I what I did do for the pieces and what I did for the large piece, which is again using your sketchbook for, is the elements of the girls and the flowers at the back. I made templates for. And if you're going to make a template and it has to be symmetrical, my advice to you to, is to fold the paper in half and just draw the one half of it until you get it the way you want and then cut it out because that will give you the best symmetrical way to achieve something and this is what I did with the girls I did it on a small scale and looking back over I could change bits that I liked and didn't like and that's what I did I did a, a template and if anyone is interested, I will do a template of the girls and the flower. I will put it on my Etsy shop for you to download. If you are part of my Patreon channel and you subscribe, you will get the pattern for free if you're interested in colouring it in and submitting the picture to me just so I can have a look see how it is. Again, also with the um, flowers in the hair, also is a template. So by, what another thing that I looked at with Andy Warhol was that he did things in freeze. So I thought that was really brilliant because it gave me a chance to put an ethnic person in the picture, a girl with blonde hair, and a girl with, it, it, originally it was going to be dark brown, but I kind of like the idea again of Andy Warhol of using a different colour hair. So the, the ethnic girl's got purple hair and the girl that would have had brown hair has got blue hair. Um, also the flowers, I mean, I love that song, you know, flowers that grow incredibly high and I did like the stylizedness of 
the flowers and I put them at the background, at the background really, really high. So again, that was inspired by the yellow submarine. I'm only doing one coat on this spread because I just want to try out the colours. It's just to see how they will work. It's not actually to you know see see it in its in its entirety because that's what the finished picture will be doing. Another thing as well um, is I wanted it to also have a collage element to it. So I looked for collage in the dresses and I looked at just quickly while I was researching for papers just to quickly cut out just to see what it would look like with that collage element. Could I get away with just that one piece or not? You know, with, with the dresses or did it require more? Uh, I used in this piece acrylics and good old faithful household paints. Now, with that vinyl house pastel paints, you do get this amazing flat colour. You do get it with acrylics, but with household paints, it's more of a chalky kind of effect, which you can get in printing, where acrylics, because acrylics is plastic based, you do get a kind of a, a plasticky finish, which you don't get with household paints. And anybody who's a bit on a budget, like I've been, I've been on a budget so many times, I'm on a budget now, um, go and get the tester pots. The tester pots, they loosely cost between $1.99 to $3.99, well in the UK, I, I, I can't say for any other country. But the paint industry for home decoration are really canny that they loosely give you buy two pots and get the third one free because they know they're going to get a sale so you know you do and another little tip for this as well is try not to get the ones with the paintbrush attached to the lid because you will find that you will get more paint in the tubs without it and Crown is the company in England they are a stickler for doing that I know that they want to sell their paints and they're being helpful because it helps you put it on the wall but actually for a struggling artist it <laughs> doesn't help very much at all. So go for, I usually go down b and it's quite a big chain and I usually get their own paints and believe you me there are such a variety of paints and because there's quite a lot in there and, and say you're doing a big canvas you can get, if you buy five or six of them, it saves you worrying about mixing up the same colour again. Just a little tip from me. Whether they are archival, I don't know. That's something we will only find out with time. I'm assuming that in today's society, a lot of things are fade resistant. So that's what I've used for the paints. Um, I also bought myself a few cheap brushes as well because oh, I am such a serial killer of paint brushes. I think a lot of artists are. We're so infused. Well, I'm so infused about painting the things that I actually forget to clean the brushes off properly. You know, or I find that when I tidy up my studio, one or two of them have hidden behind boxes and become block hard. Or I'm in a rush and I've used one for you know, matte medium or PVA glue. So yes, I am the serial killer of brushes. As you can see now, I am just going through the red. It, it's really good because I didn't use a lot of red on this um, image. And when I did, it, it really brightens it up and gives it some depth. So, as I was saying anyway, I was looking at Andy Warhol and 
I wanted the, the, to repeat the three girls with the different, um, same shape but different outcomes. And also, when I looked at the Beatles, I found out that they have 21 songs with girls' names in. And I was actually struggling what to title this piece. And I wanted to call it Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, but I have a fear that that might be copy written. And I really didn't want to go down that route. And also, I wanted it to be inspirational, to show the inspiration was Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. I mean, anybody that would look at the piece would get that straight away, but I wanted to make it a little bit more so that you could travel around the picture. And so I decided that I would use David Hockney glasses, or as some people might say, John Lennon glasses as well. And what I have done is in the middle of each glass, what do you call it? Spectacle glass? A lot lens. Ah, lens, yes. Within each of the lenses, I have done aspects of the song again. Obviously, the girl in the middle is Lucy in the sky with diamonds, and so the lens shows the diamonds. And to her right, she is the girl with the sun in her eyes. And to her left is the girl with kaleidoscope eyes. And this reflects in their glasses. And I thought that was quite cool as well. So again, I'm looking at the Sergeant Pepper. I'm looking at Andy Warhol, Peter Blake and listening to the music while I am doing this. My God, I think I'm an expert now on Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. But I won't sing it for you because I sound like a fire alarm going off. I've not got the best voice in the world. Um, this actually did do for me as well is the lyrics of the song that's left behind uh, has inspired me to do another two pictures from this um, I like the idea of the rocking horse people eating marshmallow pie and the guy at the train station with the kaleidoscope ties so yeah I think I might do a series of three. I like, I like doing a series of threes. Four is always difficult to think of a fourth thing. You could always, um, you know, beef out three pictures. So, you know, I think I might do a couple more. You might find a couple more in my sketchbook. You know, but I spend a lot of time in my head sort of cutting out the pieces and thinking about the pieces before I commit to paper. And a lot of people think, you know, you sat down doing nothing, but actually you're spending a lot of time designing, editing and colour in your head until a picture suddenly emerges, which is a really, really interesting way for me that I like to work. So. Obviously, now you're watching this, the picture has actually been taken to the gallery, it is finished, and um, I am quite pleased with it, so I, I am actually just keeping my fingers crossed to see if I will be accepted. It's always a nerve-wracking feeling when you know that you're going to be in a gallery and well, you, you know, you're going to be accepted. I, mean, I spend half my time on the toilet, to be fair, to, to be brutally honest. Yeah, I was, you know, I was rushing around doing, doing the picture and, and I'd done the sketch and painted it. And you will, at the end of this video, um, see the finished picture in its frame and I will talk you through it and, and the little bits that I've changed. But 
oh gosh, you come up with an idea and they ask for entries and you never really know whether you're going to be picked or whether you're good enough or not. Oh, and I, and I do panic an awful lot as well. Not the inner critic on the work itself, more of what else is going to be picked, more of other people's work really. Is, is it going to fit in with other people's work? Will it be, will it, will it fit in with the gallery? Because sometimes they give you a shout out and you, and you don't know the gallery and you don't know the interior of the gallery. It's kind of worrying because, you know, you, you could go, you know, all out to do a fantastic piece of work. And when you get there, the gallery really isn't suitable. But what I, when I did go to the gallery, because I, I had only seen like, pictures from their website and I've not actually been in there but when I did walk in there it had a bit of an industrial feel um, some of the walls were brick exposed brickwork and some of them were white and I just thought yeah that my work would fit in there really nicely it just depends on the overwhelming majority of work that they've got are they looking for diverse pieces of work or are they looking for um, you know, a theme. You don't know what a curator or an exhibition curator has got in mind when they open, when they call out for an open. Where if they call out for specific pieces, you know, you you've got a bit of a, more of a chance of knowing that what they're looking for. You know, you, you're in, in with a, a little bit more of a chance, really. So anyway, I took it all the way there. I managed to find out where it was, and I say the gallery is is really beautiful. And I, and I keep my fingers crossed. I will let you know when I do my next YouTube um, whether I will have been accepted. So I keep my fingers crossed. I've got one more day to go, and I was just waiting and seeing now. So. You know, the weather here, it's got really, really cold here recently and it's now raining and really dark. So looking at my picture, it does look quite bright and cheerful. Reminded me of the summer that went so, so quickly. Because they do go quickly these days, including the weeks. You know, it seems like only last week I was getting over Christmas from last year. Now it's Christmas again. But hey ho. So as you can see, it's it's looking quite bright now and lots of bright colours. If I was to do the colours over again, if you know, if I was to deepen them, you, you know, it, it would be really much brighter. And, but I didn't need to. You don't really need to do that in your sketchbook, be, unless it's a finished piece that you're doing. Like sometimes in my sketchbook, they are just one pieces that I've done and they are they are finished. But this is what I call a, a working painting. It, it, it really doesn't need to be finished. You know, I don't, I don't need to have that depth of colour because that will come through on the other piece. And doing this style on, on the larger scale as well is it does take a long time because you are doing layer upon layer of paint. You know, the, you want to cover up because I've drawn on the newspaper you know you need to cover up the print and that can take a lot and, and some like if you see not the dark purple but the pinky purple on the hair that was a nightmare that was the color that I ended up using and it didn't matter what I did because it was metallic it just had a a see-through feel to it. I just needed to keep building the layers up on, on the big piece. It was a bit of a nightmare. Where the green of the flowers is also luminescent, but the, 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 pit, the paint was so much better. It went on so much better. It's still quite translucent, but the layers did cover up a lot better, which I was much more pleased with the flowers. And also, when I did it in my book, it, it seemed okay. The, I had the balance of the girls and the flowers, but when I actually did the bigger piece, then I found that I needed 
to put more bits in which I will show you later. So my original plan was to call the polystyrene pan Lucy and Eleanor. That was one of the names that I was going to call these pieces from reference from the Beatles. But I ended up not actually calling it that at all. I ended up calling it LSD, which is an abbreviation for Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. And as I was painting this, obviously my partner Eddie, who is a singer-songwriter when he's not doing his daytime job, um, he told me when he saw it and he helped me frame that piece my technician. And um, he was saying, what are you going to call it? And I told him, all the sorry, Pam, Lucy in the sky, and you know, Lucy and Eleanor. And he said, oh right, Lucy in the sky. You're not going to call it Lucy in the Sky? And I said, well, no, because I think it could be copywritten. And he turned around and said, well, why don't you call it LSD? And I sort of sniggered because obviously LSD is part of the 60s. And he goes, well, Jimi Hendrix thought that Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds was a metaphor for LSD. And I mean, really, I didn't know that because obviously most of my background is art related rather than music. I don't pour hours over Mojo magazine like musicians do and my wasted youth was on art books and I thought do you know what that's so cool because that really does fit in the theme with the 1960s and LSD, bright colours, print, the artwork and so the piece eventually got called LSD. <laughs> And when I came back from the, dropping the work off at the gallery, Eddie turned around and said to me, of course, the only thing is, when I was telling him about the groups of the other people that were going, I mean, there were quite a few old ladies in Tweed, looking a bit like Miss Marple. And we had to unwrap our work when we got there to show, the, to show them the work so they could place it in the appropriate place in a collective. And a couple of the old Tweed Miss Marples before me had lovely watercolour landscapes. Of course, mine came out in shock horror to the what do you call them? The ladies, the Women's Institute. A bit of a gasp there when my psychedelic picture was unwrapped. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, Eddie did turn around and say to me that maybe the title LSD might rock the village. <laughs> We can only wait and see. But sometimes it is difficult to name a, a name a piece of work when you've been inspired by something so famous that everybody knows and has quite a tight constraint around it as well. So as you can see I am now sorry about looking at my hair. Oh, there we go. I'm going around in a white pen. Just a highlight. Look how grey I'm going. That is the only trouble with this with this camera. I've got it on the ceiling, but sometimes my head does get in the way. And I can't think of another way to position it. But hey ho, uh, that's a good way. Maybe if I just move the book. So you can see, yeah, I'm just going round, round white. Um, I did go back to look at the reference of the yellow submarine and everything does seem to be, um, have a black line round it. Not quite Disney, but has a black line round it. Which I, I, I don't mind in this piece of work. I do, when I do teach art, I do say to people, when you get an awful lot of people that do like flowers and that and they insist on doing the black line round it and I actually say to them if you look at a rose in situ has it got a black line round it people, yeah but people won't know that's a rose unless there's a black line round it yes people will know that's a rose you don't need to do the Disney black line round it but because this is a stylized piece and it is set like an animation 
cell. That's what they call themselves. But yeah, there is a black line around it. And then I'm just doing the flowers. And on the big piece, I did a mistake. The flowers, when I cut them out from the template, were a little bit too short. So I had to use another piece of collage behind the girls, which I think worked a lot better in the final piece. put it all together and what I also decided to do as well is you'll, you'll see in a minute um, I made straws from the mouth to go in the mouths because I felt that in the 1960s although there is, it is a drinking culture but I thought that maybe in California correct me if I'm wrong any of you California and San Francisco people out there but I like the idea that they still drank a lot of Dr. Peppers and Coca-Cola. I mean, in the 70s, when we used to have the Coca-Cola apps over here, we used to have, I like to teach the world to sing, and there was lots of flowy dresses, and wavy hair, and bandanas and that. So I, I kind of wanted to think that that was, that started in the late 60s, and that people were drinking Coca-Cola. And so I did some straws to come out of the mouths, just to kind of tie it again and give it another kind of element from that era. I actually did the glasses in gold leaf in the end. I thought that was that, that would make them stand out a little bit more and not so perfect because gold leaf is, an, is murder to work with especially when you're as impatient as I am. That's the only trouble with how it takes well, And now you can see these are the straws that I've done previously and I'm just sticking them down just to give them a, you know, a little bit more, I don't know, American feel maybe, rather than English. And I think they turned out quite well. I'm quite pleased with them. Do you know what, that book is getting so thick now, it's getting difficult for me to close. And again, this is, again, this is it, just showing you quickly. And then I will show you the... Hi guys, and this is the finished picture in the mount. And as you can see, I've added a few extra bits. I did think when I was filming this that I had the audio on, but I didn't. So, as you can see, I've added um, some Led Zeppelin balloons, Peter Blake's target, and flowers that I blend to help balance it off. I don't know what I'm telling you there. <laughs> and these is the materials that I started to use at the end. That's the different colour hairs. I'm showing you and the dresses I've used the paisley pattern and in the middle bottle tops for Peter Blake and that's what I'm just telling you there and in the background I've used some topori no it's not topori hedges at the back of the flowers and that's it all mounted up now I'm going to show you it all framed up and there it is all framed up in a white frame because a black frame would have made it too busy and there are the girls all waiting to go to the gallery and there we are.